I'm uh, Jeffrey Hicks, and I'm an installation artist. Uh, I started out doing mostly photography, uh, which is what I took in high school and really got me interested in photography. I briefly went to school at uh, OU and then at California Institute of the Arts in Los Angeles. And then uh, about 2001, I came back to Oklahoma and decided to kind of go at it on my own. And I started doing more photography again. And uh, as the photography progressed, I kind of morphed that into installation art where I uh, made digital picture frames that uh, had sensors integrated into them. And I used the sensors to detect the distance from uh, the viewer was from the frame and use that to uh, give data to the frame that would then change the picture accordingly or manipulate it somehow. One of my recent projects, Heartbeat, which was shown at Momentum in Oklahoma City last year, was an installation and a performance art piece which involved uh, 151 hanging light bulbs that were controlled by the heartbeat of a dancer who performed underneath it. And it was also controlled by uh, viewers who walked up to it and uh, visitors and they could uh, clip their finger onto a finger clip, which was just like, a, like you could do at a hospital or a doctor's office. And I, I enjoyed it quite a bit because it was a, um, it was what I've been pleased with the most. It was a very good installation. I had a good space to work in and I had plenty of time frame from OVAC to do it in and uh, had curatorial help as well from the curators from the show. My R365 project involves a large robotic arm I got on eBay a couple of years ago. It's actually behind me, you can obviously see it. And uh, I'm gonna use that along with a uh, digital camera to uh, make the robotic arm actually a photographer in and of itself and allow their arm to uh, take people's photographs, whoever walks up to it in the gallery. And I'm gonna write all the software that goes with that and um, it's going to have face detection um, software that allows it to move around and find people's faces uh, pretty much just like a normal person would and uh, interact with its subjects that way and take their photos and um, kind of correlate them uh, with other photos that are similar and show them on screens behind it at the same time, uh, kind of live as it's going on. It's mostly going to be about the interaction between the arm as a photographer, the arm as a person, and the subjects. It's not really as much about the results of the photography, but it kind of is, and it's kind of that dynamic of um, the kind of ambiguity of what is the art? Is the art the arm taking Bill's pictures? Is the art the result it makes? Um, and kind of challenging people's ideas of, you know, what is art or um, how they perceive art. Well, for this project specifically, I think it uh, continues Jeffrey's interest in um, randomness and how ideas of randomness are generated. And in this case, they're generated through a re-articulated five-foot robotic arm. The arm uh, is in the gallery space and operates in isolation. Um, so as a big arm that roves through the space, um, gets in close uh, proximity with the viewers and kind of the unexpected uh, productivity, um, perhaps even failure of its production will unfold during the exhibition. Uh, so that has an element of surprise that I think uh, Jeffrey explores in his work. The arm I bought off of eBay, uh, which is uh, something where I get a lot of my uh, inspiration for art, and uh, obviously it was rather difficult to just move around. It weighs about 800 pounds and it's pretty dense, so it's kind of like a large safe, uh, very hard to move around. It is several years old, probably about 25 years old, and so I have the arm, but I don't have the controller that makes it move, but I know how to make one, and so part of the challenge is building that controller and finding the mating connectors that made up to the arm so that I can attach the controller to it. Um, and then kind of the other process is um, making as much of it from scratch as I can. So I'm gonna build the controller, um, from not from scratch, but mostly from scratch. And I'm gonna write all the software that goes along with it and, um, and kind of make it all come together. And so it's kind of um, gonna be a learning process um, as I go along. And I'm gonna run to lots of challenges that I'll have to get through, but that's the kind of the whole point of it is to um, challenge myself to a new level every time I do something new. My interest in art, a lot of it is about the formality of the art and the formality of the setting and the aesthetics of it. And so most of my projects, while they may be rather complex and involve a lot of preparation, have a lot of wires and a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff in the back end, um, I generally don't uh, reveal that to the viewer. I generally like the viewer to only see um, the simplest form of it in the end um, and not really what goes on behind the scenes. I generally hide all the wires and I don't make much of a big deal about how many hours or tens of hours or hundreds of hours it may take to build. Um, it's really just um, 
it's kind of a twofold thing where it's to me it's about my process but I also make it for the viewer not about my process but about the end result. Most of my ideas come after I have a piece of technology or, or something that kind of inspires me. Like with the robot arm, I got it on eBay not having any idea whatsoever what I would use it for um, and got it here and then when Art365 came around I spent a couple months coming up with an idea and formulating that around it. And that happens with a lot of my art, it kind of comes that way. But while some people might find that to be a little contrary or backwards, I think it's very natural as an artist. Just as a, uh, maybe a wood sculpting artist would go through the woods and find different pieces of wood and he might bring them back to his studio and leave them there for a while and kind of look at them while he's making other things and finally realize what he wants to make that piece of wood into, I do the same thing. I, I, get, um, I get some sort of item or some sort of technology and I work with it for a long period of time. It may be a year or two years. Most of my recent projects, I had the stuff on hand for at least 16 or 18 months before I built it into a project, which is a considerable amount of time. Since a lot of my art is, um, I'm essentially building a product or something just kind of like a prototyping person would, there's a lot of work I do after it's completed. Like, uh, I really need to have the project complete and pretty much working at least 60 or 90 days before I have to show it so that I have that much time to work out the kinks because there's unlimited variables. It's not like I'm making a painting that just hangs on a wall. It actually works and runs and you have to anticipate any ways in which these variables can happen or what people can do with it to make sure that you close all the loops to make sure that someone doesn't do something and it doesn't not understand how to react to that um, unforeseen event. So it's great to have that full year to work on the project and um, uh, I think it's a very good time for me.